Great to have you back here on The Breakfast here, Plus TV Africa. Our next conversation is going to be on female genital mutilation. It is a culture and an activity that has happened for many, many decades here in Nigeria, across Africa, and in other parts of the world. Uh, the conversation this morning is going to be on how we can eventually put an end to uh, this act. Uh, tomorrow is going to be celebrated as a day to you know, observe and remember uh, um, um, female genital mutilation and, of course, a continued conversation on it. We've invited this morning Julie Mogbo, a family uh, bond nurse, uh, to join us. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you. We also have uh, Ogechi Ukasoya. Uh, consultant of VVF and a medical laboratory scientist. Thank you so much also for uh, speaking with us. Thank you. Good morning. All right. I'm going to start with uh, Julie uh, Mogbo. I, I, I want you to start with talking about um, how bad this is in Nigeria. Um, it's something that, you know, a lot of people have continued, I believe, in the villages, in the rural, maybe even urban settings um, um, for many years. Um, but what, where, what are we still currently dealing with? What is the rate of FGM still taking place in Nigeria today? Thank you very much for that question. And it's really good that we are discussing this topic. We sadly have been talking about FGM for decades. And it's sad that even uh, in the 21st century, we are still discussing this particular practice. Harmful practice, I must say. The problem that we are currently dealing with is the problem of our tradition, traditional practices that aren't healthy, that aren't beneficial. And what is informing these practices? It's as a result of a belief that certain things would be able to curb promiscuity and increase certain satisfaction for a woman's husband. So we are dealing with a bigger problem, which is the belief system, until we get to that point where we can address the fundamental beliefs of the people. If we don't get to do that, we will be fighting this cause many years to come. Julie, so it's so bad now. Yes, please. Yes, I, I wanted to also add to, you know, basically, to break down what female genital mutilation is. So according to the World Health Organization, it is a, the partial or total removal of the external features of the female genitalia. So whether it's a partial one, no matter what it is, no matter how minute it is, it is totally wrong. That is female genital mutilation. So it's either a partial or a total removal of the external features of a female genitalia. Now, it comes in different stages and practiced in different forms across the country. Sadly, in the South South have more of these practices. But when you go up north, you will find out that, that their own practices are more extreme. So they're in different stages. There's the part where the, there's a partial removal of the clitoris. There's the part where you take out part of the lab, uh, labia minora. That's the, the, we call it the lips of the genitalia. So you take out the, the smaller one and the bigger one. But up north, there's a case where there's a suturing, there's a stitch, there's a partial closure of the orifice, that's the opening that permits urine and menstrual flow. They just leave, leave a tiny hole that allows for natural flow. So that is how badly it is practiced mm. up north. Um. So when you come to south, south, southeast, it's, it's, a, 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 it's less harmful, yet it is still harmful because according to the World Health Organization, whether it's a partial or total removal, that is female genital mutilation. Um, I'm going to bring in Ogechi next. Um, you know, from what uh, Julie has described, it's, it's pretty, it's frightening, actually. Um, and um, I, I, you know, personally didn't know it was that bad in the north. 
Uh, but, Ogechi, we're going to bring you in here. It says, uh, from what I read, globally 200 million women and girls have been mutilated or caught. In Nigeria alone, 20 million women and girls have been mut um, uh, mutilated, which is 10% of the global total. Um, the reasons, the most popular reasons why FGM happens here in Nigeria, um, I'm sure that there have been campaigns against it. Um, so, Ogechi, I want you, your thoughts on how far these campaigns have gone and what more needs to be done to change the narrative and to change the perspective um, in the most rural areas concerning FGM. Okay, good morning again, and it's great to be here. Um, the main reasons why these things have, this thing has continued or perpetrated in our society, uh, firstly, culture. People believe that, um, some people do it just because um, they've heard their parents do it, our ancestors have done it, it won't end in our own time. Let's just keep it going, let's keep doing it. Um, and then they just go on to, you know, mutilate um, the female child. Other people do it, like um, the other guest has said, to curb um, sexual promiscuity. You know, removing, for instance, the clitoris of a woman would significantly decrease her, her, her sexual urge or the pleasure she would derive, you know, during sex. Also, infibulation, which she had explained, which is a suturing and narrowing of of, of the, the, the genitalia, would even completely prevent the lady from having any form of intercourse until it is opened back when she's getting married. So these are some of the real causes, some of the causes of this, um, of this very, very harmful practice, which is of no benefit at all to the, the woman or the girl child this is done to. Yeah. A lot of campaigns have gone on. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I want to hear about the campaigns of, and how successful they've been. A lot of campaigns have, have been done. Even the, the VVF initiative has gone on campaigns. But the reason this is really hard is you know how tenaciously we hold on to our culture. So the whole, it's our tradition, it's our culture. Promiscuity is increasing. We have to do something about it. That's the limiting factor. We need to be able to eliminate um, that mentality completely that that will help curb promiscuity or that that makes a lady more chaste or pure, you know, and end it completely, you know, drop that culture. Um, I think it's a mindset change. That's what we need to do. More awareness programs. All right. Uh, Julie, Let's talk about how this female genital mutilation basically violates the rights of the girl child. Because we know this practice is done um, on, on kids from birth to about age five. Isn't that so? And how does it affect their rights? Yes. Okay, so it does affect them. And sadly, it is done from when they are as little at, as age five, like, like you put it. So the, the girl child has a right to grow. She has a right to her body. She has a right to detect what happens or does not happen to her body. It is sad that when they are girls, when they are little girls, we take this right from them. And then when they grow up, we start to teach them certain rights. So there's a conflict. There is a confusion there. They would find it difficult because I grew up. And sadly, let me even put it, many girls grow up not knowing what has been done to them, for those that had this done at, at a much younger age, nobody tells them what was done. So what they are trying to prevent, which is sexual promiscuity, they, some of these girls end up jumping and hopping from one partner to another, seeking pleasure, because she's wondering, why is this happening to me? So the rights of a female, of a full-grown human being, I say human because when it comes to sexual intercourse, it is not more of a right of a man than it is for the woman. So they are both human beings. They are meant to experience this to the fullest. So the right to have that pleasure is taken off the woman. And sadly, like I said earlier, some don't even know. So they go hopping from one partner to another, wondering what is going on? Why am I not having this pleasure. So what they are trying to prevent from the start, they end up even increasing it when mm. these women get older. So 
That's the right, the right to her own body to dictate what happens and does not happen. The right to health. The female child has a right to be healthy. And I think it's also Amaka, the second guest would say there are, there are certain dangers that come. There are certain health dangers and risks that these children are exposed to when they undergo these harmful practices. Yes. So they're taking their rights from them to enjoy sexual pleasure. All right. I was actually so going to... I was going to bring in Ogechi now to talk about those, you know, negative effects on their health. We know that this leads to bleeding, this leads to severe pain. Some of them even die. I don't know. What do you, what, what are the facts right now, the negative consequences of female genital mutilation on the girl child? Okay, there are, there are um, immediate consequences or, or um, implications, and then there are long-term ones. For instance, bleeding. The immediate ones include bleeding. Um, when when the, the vein around the clitoris is caught, the, the, the child might bleed to death. Okay, and then in some of these areas, areas where, where there are no antibiotics and rural areas where this is practiced more, you know, they do it locally with razor blades and shafts and all that. And most of these things are not even sterilized. So it increases the risk of transmitting, you know, infections like HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections by using the same blade for this person and the same blade for the other person, you know, it increases the chances of such um, such things being transmitted. Also, a recurrent um, urinary tract infection. There's an exposure of the of the of the of the genitalia after that process. So it increases the, the rate at which you know they can get infected with so many um, urinary tract infections. Yeah, also, was, uh... aside that. There, there is, there is, there is, you know, um, obstruction. For instance, the infibulation. There's an obstruction of the passage of the urethra, which causes urine retention. You know, and urine retention could could actually, you know, result in infections, bacteria coming up from there right into the urethra and even the fallopian tube, and resulting in, you know, infertility. It is that bad. All right. Um... Also. It increases um, obstruction in labor during delivery, you know, resulting in the death of a child and increases the risk of complications for the woman during delivery. All right, hold on, um, Ogechi. I'm going to go back. These are just some of the the, 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 the the implications of this procedure. All right, I'm, we're going to go back to Julie uh, Mogo. Um, I'm, you know, really, really I've always been concerned about why we put so much effort and so much attention and passion into controlling female promiscuity and abandon and leave the guys out of the conversation you know and why we have so many of these cultural practices to control women um in our society it doesn't seem fair in any way uh, but uh, let's talk about laws now the violence against uh, persons uh, prohibition act uh, vapp as it's called um how, how how far has that gone to help curb uh, female genital mutilation um, i know that the constitution and um uh, the Child Rights Act have not been entirely effective because they don't mention FGM in any way. But the Violence Against uh, per, uh, Persons Prohibition Act um, seems to have a wider coverage. Um, how far has that gone and has that helped in any way in uh, Nigeria? This is to Julie Mogo. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Well, we, we have two problems here. So the first is the fact that the FGM isn't categorically mentioned in the law. As at the last time that I checked, I do not know of any law that prohibits or makes an offense the practice of FGM, female genital mutilation. That is one. Then second problem is the implementation or the enforcement of the law. We do not even have that. So we have the violence against persons, but to what extent, how many states, even the child rights law, how many states have implemented or are implementing or are seeking help or support from organizations? We have so many non-governmental organizations, international organizations that are running these programs and funding some of these projects. So we have a, a, a myriad of problems that we are, we are facing. If we have funding from organizations to carry out campaigns and execute projects, how do we ensure that these things are done? How do we ensure that every program is implemented to the letter? 
So the, the, we, we, we haven't been able to achieve much because on the streets, I still watched, I think that was last year, on social media, a man beat up his wife, put the picture on Facebook, and he said, go call the police on me. So if someone could be that audacious to do that, that speaks of the country that we, are, that we live in, that speaks of the government that we have. So that alone is enough to say, oh, there's something we are not doing right yet. We've not gotten it right yet. So even if we have all of these laws, we, 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 we aren't really achieving much because go down to the rural areas. We're dealing with the fundamental belief system here. And until we include them in our curriculum, until we talk to people across levels. Now, when I say across level, I'm not, not just the school, not just the women organization. Let's talk to the men. Let's talk to the corporate ones. Because we still have learned individual that feels that the way a woman dresses attracts certain violent reactions. The way yes. a woman talks attracts certain violent reactions. All right. We still have people with disbelief. So it's, 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 it's a long Okay, just, just to quickly uh, add to that, the Violence Against P uh, Persons Prohibition Act, uh, Article 6 of it says, uh, circ circumcision or genital mutilation of the girl, child or woman is prohibited. It also uh, says a person who performs female circum circumcision or genital mutilation or engages another to carry out such uh, commits an offence that is liable to conviction or term of imprisonment not exceeding four years or fine not exceeding 200,000 naira. So it actually is stated in the uh, Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition uh, yes, Act. Yes, I saw but that anyway. uh, VAPP Act yeah. as well. But really, is that punishment enough? 200,000 naira fine? Maybe not. You know, but anyway, just I mean, to quickly wrap up, uh, this question goes to both Julie and Ogechi. Uh, we know that uh, it seems we have a law you know, to combat this, but really how many people actually get prosecuted. But what can you and I do? What can the everyday Nigerian do about this? Do we need to up our campaign? Do we need to talk about this more often to discourage cultural practices? Because the last time I checked, this is not recommended by any religion. So definitely it seems to be more of a cultural mm -hmm. thing. So what can the everyday Nigerian do to seconds, break please. down these, you know, cultural practices that basically dehumanizes and uh, dehumanizes women and girls. Okay, uh, uh, th thank you very much. I'm, I'm so delighted. Like I said, the, the last that I checked, I, I didn't know of uh, any law. It's great to know that this is there, but our major problem is actually the implementation of the law because some people believe they are above the law. And uh, because of certain either stigmatization or uh, persecution of some sort, some women will not be able to go forth to, re to report these practices done around them. But what is our responsibility as individuals? We need to, first of all, educate people of what's in the law and that this practice is prohibited. That is one. Then secondly, let's talk to our brothers out there. Let's talk to the men out there. Except the man is selfish. This practice is actually against the man. Because you, the, the, that is a sexual intercourse. It's a two-way thing. I agree. You don't want to just go there and then leave. So there's, it's important for the, the, the woman's rights to be protected so that what we are trying to prevent will not be our fault. We will okay. still have that if we continue these practices. All right, let's bring in Ogechi for 30 seconds, please. Okay, um, what I think we should do, or every one of us should do to be able to, to curb this or end it, is to educate the people around us. You know, some of us in the urban areas know that this is wrong and we try to avoid it. It's not, it's not really practiced in the urban areas that much, but you know, in the rural areas, it's rampant. So when we visit, when we relate with our, our, our relatives in the rural areas, we'll be able to talk to them. When we see them do things like this, we'll be able to explain the implications on the woman. You know, the long-term and short-term implications of this, what we really need to do is a massive campaign, television campaigns, you know, going into the villages, you know, in groups to talk to people about this, to tell them the implications of it, and to educate them that it is completely wrong and against the right of the female child. Right. Um, Julie Mogo, uh, family born nurse, uh, thank you so much for speaking with us um, and for your time. Same uh, to Ogechi Ukasonya. A consultant VVF, thank you so much also for thank speaking with us uh, this morning. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, to be honest, as you mentioned the negative effects of FGM, I, I was cringing. I was feeling mm. it basically. It was so 
horrifying to hear that so many girls went through this. Yes. Well, once again, um, my concern is why we have so much passion and so much energy and so many of these cultural um, acts to control women and to control, you know, what we term promiscuity. And up to this um, time in 2021. Yeah. Why, why do we have so many of them? Um, I'm very sure if you take this case to a Nigerian police, they wouldn't understand why you think it's illegal or why you think you're breaking the law. The Nigerian policeman would say, yes, you know, they've been doing it for many, many years, part of our culture and years. Maybe he even did it to his duty. own daughter. You Probably, know, that's the cultural you know, so, so, um, thing I, we're I, about. I, We should put less energy and less passion into controlling women. That, that's yes. really where all of this comes Hopefully from. Hopefully this Sorosuki generation, this woke generation wouldn't do that to our kids, would we? Let's, let's do better. So that's it on this segment on The Breakfast. We'll now uh, head straight to talk about the Sanu Nasa strike after this. Do stay with us.